based on all that he has learned for the last 15 years in the music business. He joins us this evening to discuss his new book, The Ultimate Survival Guide to the New Music Industry, Handbook for Hell. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Justin Goldberg. The impetus for creating the book, The Ultimate Survival Guide to the New Music Industry, was really primarily to address the fundamental disconnect between creative people and business people. The business has always had a hard time reconciling uh, itself with artists. Contracts have always been unfair at record companies. The standard agreement given to artists is well known to be uh, a very skewed document. I wanted to create a book that created some sort of path where artists could create a livelihood for themselves without having to succumb to uh, the terms of uh, a major record label's recording contract. The book addresses almost everything that a musician signed to a major record label, signed to an indie label, or self-promoting their own albums could ever hope to know. Um, there's information about, there's extensive information about film and TV and how to get your music placed in, in film and television projects. There's information about how you can license your own album to overseas distributors and licensors. The CD-ROM that's included in the back of the book is actually really cool. There's almost as much, if not more, information in the disc as there is in the entire book. One, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, yeah. A&R is, of course, a pun uh, based on the word A&R. Uh, we take it for granted in the music industry that everyone knows what A&R stands for, but for those who don't, A&R harkens back to the day when A and R stood for the artist and the repertoire, and the A&R man was the person who brought the two of those things together. Uh, often they were also producers, staff producers that work for record companies. Nowadays, A&R refers to basically anyone who's running around listening to new uh, artists. As the world started to transform transform from an analog one of demo tapes to a digital one of DAT tapes and CDs, it occurred to me that demo tapes were really a lost art. People used to spend a lot of time on the artwork that went into a demo tape, the look, the feel, whether they get a TDK 90 gold, a silver, all these little nuances in the tape were considered so important that I remember when they invented AMSS so you could find the next song. It was like an incredible uh, digital technical leap. You could actually sit there for five minutes and wait for each song to be fast forwarded. I mean, it's almost ludicrous now, but you know, we lived and died by cassette tapes. So I decided I would document them in a way that would lend a faded and old um, look to the canvas. So they're basically watercolors, but they are digitally manipulated images that are taken mostly from demo tapes and um, old documents, uh, court documents in some cases, as Nirvana and Courtney Love. Having been an insider and being involved in a lot of the deals that didn't happen, um, such as Jewel and some of the demo tapes that were submitted to me early, early on before they had record deals like um, Lisa Loeb and Tracy Bonham and Incubus. So that is what a and Art essentially incorporates. The book is driven by stories about the business. And of course, the a and Art work is about people and stories of the business, so it was appropriate to put the two together and have some of the artwork drive certain stories in the book and to drive home certain points. And one uh, chapter in particular I lead off with a painting that's called Gig Report. Gig Report is um, a memo, uh, based on a memo that I had written for the president of Sony Music at, uh, Publishing at the time, who had requested that I do a weekly update of every gig that I had attended. Um, but it's funny now to look back on this gig report and see the names that made it, and more often the names that you've never heard from again. And in the chapter I try and explore what is it that makes certain artists go towards a path of superstardom and other artists disappear, and more importantly than just decide what qualities make an artist super successful or not, um, I try and analyze uh, the most important piece of information, which is what does an artist want 
um, when they're beginning their careers. What are their career goals? What do they think is success and how do they define it? So I use the paintings to uh, drive home certain points like that.